hello everybody we're getting ready on the last day here on friday we're trying to get everything done you know so we got a vacuum cleaner we got brooms we got spick and span that'll kill coronavirus and we're getting ready for you to come back sunday morning now it's going to be an exciting time for us because at 10 a.m one service only we're going to begin to work to get us back in the church and it's going to take you and I to work together as a team of people to get everybody in. Now, it's very, very important that you read your emails today. We've been trying. We'll, we, we will open the building at 9 a.m. so that you can come in and begin to feel and experience what we're doing. Now, once that happens, we'll come in. We'll have a group of people that will seat you. Now, that means that some of us who have those sacred seats, you ain't going to get them this time. And the reason for that is we have to do all the social distancing correctly stuff. So I want you to be given grace and mercy and remember that we love you and we want to come back and we want to have a great worship. So today I want to just take a moment and begin to share with you that I want you to think about these statistics. In York County, there's 281,000 people. As of today, we have 433 cases in the entire York County. And if you were to do the multiplication, what you do divide, you would find out it is 0 0.0015. That's pretty minute. So I want you to come, read the instructions we give you, try to do the very best, and let's come Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Carolina Cornerstone Church, in the worship center, and we're going to have a great time. You know, this week we've had a lot of fun. We have been talking about what influences us. And I want to close this week by saying this. We've learned what we need to learn. Now we need to put it in practice. See, the book of James says it this way in James 1, from the ESV version. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Do you know the most difficult part of Bible study is personal application? What is the application? I'm glad you asked that question. What you learn is it takes the truth from God's word and we apply it in our life. So let's, we need our fifth and final test of this week. So let me review real quick. First test we gave you on Monday was the influence test. Will this harm people? Tuesday we gave you the independence test, which said, could this happen? Could this dominate and control my life? Wednesday we gave you the test called the improvement test. Will this make me a better person? And then on Thursday, we call the equipment test. Am I using the right equipment? So today, I have a brand new test for you. In fi fifth and final test, apply test. Am I applying to my life the truths that God has given me? And maybe you even need to ask the question, where are you getting your truths? So you need to remember, application means we take the truth that God gives us through his word and we apply it into the program. So in John 13, 17, it says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. It's so important. We had this idea that it, all we need to do is to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and we don't have to do anything else. That's not true at all. What we do is God puts us into action. We are action people. Let me give you an example. The Bible is clear. It says, we're to love one another. We're to do right. We're to help the poor. We're to help those who are struggling. Maybe they're sick physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We're to help them. I want you to hear what I'm saying today. Just knowing God's word is not enough. God's word, if all you want to do is fill your head up until it blows up with knowledge, that is no good. You experience God's blessings when you take God's word and you put it into action be doers of the word not only hearers now let me tell you about your opponent the devil what he does is Satan he doesn't care if you come to church he doesn't care if you go to life groups he doesn't care if you get involved in ministry but the moment you begin to apply the truth that God's word reveals to us that moment Satan gets all upset and begins to work against you so how do we become a doer of the word? Well, we got to learn to apply these things in our life. 
And what I'm talking about this morning is what I've learned from my personal experience. First, it needs to be very personal. It, this is about you. It's not about your wife or your children or your friends. This is about you making it personal. Your life is the only life that can, you can change. You can't change anybody else. So what happens, we don't talk about the we, and that we say I. The second part of this, of, of learning to apply God's word, is it's got to be practical. You know, sometimes we, we don't realize, but we make Bible study and God's word and teaching, we make it so complex that no one wants to do it. But it's very simple. You might begin to realize that God is want everything to be practical to us. He doesn't want it to be hard. So the third thing is it's got to be possible. Now, the reason I tell you this is because many people will tell me, I'm going to read the entire Bible through in one year. Good luck, as I always say. But really what you need to do is that you need to take a book and you need to start. If you're a Bible, most Bibles are in what we call paragraph form now. You need to read that paragraph and then you need to chew on it. You need to think about it. And, and for you and I, that's attainable. That means if you can do that every single day, seven days a week, you will not get discouraged trying to read God's Word. But if you tried to read the Bible through in one year, it's highly unlikely, not unless you've got a lot of time. So just chew on it. And the fourth and final piece that I want to give you in this, and applying this, the application, it needs to be provable. See, you need to have a deadline in your life. You need every morning, this is what I do, I get up and I spend time. Before I ever get out of my bed, I just turn my feet around, I pick up my Bible, and I start reading my Bible. That's exactly how I end my day. I'm, I'm getting, ready to, getting ready to close my eyes and take off the snoring, and what happens, I lay my Bible, I do my devotion reading, and then I go to sleep. The purpose of this application is that when you get up, the Bible is right there waiting on you to pick up. The Bible teaches us, and Paul writes in Philippians 2.14, do all things without grumbling or arguing and just disputing. You said, now, wait a minute. What, what, why are you saying this? There's a lot of times that God is trying to prove something to us, but he wants us to be obedient and have humility. Maybe today as you're writing through the personal applications I'm trying to give you, maybe you need to say this, Lord, I need your help not to grumble at work. Now, this is important because I'm going to tell you something. As a Christian, people don't like grumble people. I don't like people who grumble and gripe either because there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes like at the church and does things, and then when something's just not right, people are going to grumble. That's not good. That's not right of God. Matter of fact, that's a sin, the Bible says. What we have to do is learn to do things with the right heart. So, Maybe the way you can do this is begin to get you a person that's accountable that you can share with them and they can be honest with you and say, hey, you might want to take a break from that. So I want to tell you this. Don't just be satisfied with reading God's Word. Study it. Apply it. Make it part of your life. So today, I want to encourage you to come Sunday morning and apply what we've learned. Let me give you some folks to be praying for today. In our church today, I want to share with you that Miss Rita Evans passed away last night about 8 o'clock. Miss Rita had been sick. Most of you who have been with us a long time, she used to sit on about the second or third row, her and Mr. Bobby. And she has had a battle, and she has won her victory. As we were praying for the family, I want you to be praying for Big Bobby. I want you to be praying for Bobby Jr.'s family and Shannon's family. And we want to be praying. She's in heaven. The Bible says to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. And they're having a celebration in heaven because a saint has come home. I want you to be praying today for David O'Keefe and Graham Grantham, Linda Melton, Jerry Moore. He's having a procedure on Monday. Mike Cookman's having a procedure on the 23rd. Benny Ribbon's having a surgery on the 24th. My good friend John Pelletier had a procedure yesterday. He's at home. I talked with Karen by text this morning. He is doing pretty good, a little bit sore, so you'd be praying for him. So I want you to be praying today for the virus that's all over the world. Here in York County, we're seeing that virus moving away. Please, please do what they tell you to do so we can get rid of this thing sooner than later. 
I also want you to be praying for uh, Hank Cottrell, Cheryl Hunter. I want you to be praying for Lindsay Chilling Law and Sandy Merritt. And I also want you to be praying for my friend Lisa Simmons, that God will just do a healing in their lives. So would you pray with me? Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We lift this prayer list up to you. We ask you, Lord, to bless our folks on this list who have been mentioned. Lord, I ask you today, especially to be with my dear friend Bobby Evans Sr., that, Lord, you would be with him and let him know we love him and that our hearts are broken. But, Lord, we are shouting for joy because Ms. Rita has gone home. She does not suffer anymore. Help us to be open our hearts and be able to help people. I pray for the, for the virus, Lord, that you would give our scientists and doctors the knowledge of how to come up with a vaccine so we can get rid of this. I pray, Lord, for Sunday morning as we come back to church here, that our folks will be here and be patient as we are trying. Our first thing is first is to worship God, and second is to keep them safe. So, Lord, today I ask you to bless them and take care of them. Lord, bless our president, bless our governors, bless our mayors and leaders. And then finally, Lord, I pray for peace in the United States. God, I pray that Christians will get their hearts right and that people will understand that two wrongs don't make a right. So, Lord, I pray for peace and direction. I pray, Lord, for those that are involved. And we give you great, great thanks today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm going to see you now this coming Sunday, 10 a.m., Carolina's Cornerstone Church. Make sure you understand. you got to be here about night, starting to open the doors at 9 and then at 10.05, we're going to have to shut the doors because that's just what the law is telling us to do. So I want you to get here, enjoy yourself, worship and fellowship with us. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you on Sunday morning.